So here we have a quadrilateral and what we want to do is we want to identify what values of X and Y will make this quadrilateral a parallelogram. Now let's think about strategy. If we identify where those variables are, those variables are on the side. So now let's think about what properties do we need to show in terms of the sides of a parallelogram. Well, we know that for any quadrilateral to be a parallelogram, opposite sides, they need to be congruent. So if opposite sides, they need to be congruent, then let's set opposite sides equal to each other. So here we have a side of 42, and here we have a side with a length of 4x plus y. If we want them to be congruent to each other, let's set them equal to each other. So here we have our first equation. 4x plus y must be equal to 42. So the same goes with the other sides. In this case, our other equation, the side of 26 must be equivalent to the side of 3x minus 2y. So here we have our second equation, 3x minus 2y equals 26. And at this point, we have a system of equations. And now we've got to think about algebra 1, how can we solve the following? Well, I can see that this variable of y is kind of by itself. So let me isolate the variable of y. And to isolate it, let me take away 4x to both sides. So now we have y equals negative 4x plus 42. Let me just put this on the side. And now on my second equation, let me substitute this value of y. So now we got 3x minus 2. And now that I see that I have a y in here, let me substitute the value of y that I have here. So that will be minus 4x plus 42. Plus parentheses equals to 26. So now let's continue by distributing the following. So we got 3x. If we distribute, now we're going to get positive 8x. And if we distribute one more time, we're going to get negative 84 equals to 26. Now, let's combine like terms. I can see that we have an 8 and a 3. So that will give us 11x minus 84 equals to 26. So now let's add 84. So 84 to both sides. Let's just push this down. So now we got the following. They cancel out. So now we got 11x is equivalent to 110. And our last step, let's divide it by 11. And once we have that, we can see that x has a value and that value is of 10. So we know what value of x will make this a parallelogram. Now we need to figure out what's the value of y. But don't forget, we already have an equation for y here. So let's just plug in what we found out for x under the equation for y. So now we have the y equals negative 4. But don't forget, x, we found out a value for it, which is 10. So let's plug it in there. So parentheses, let's plug in a 10 in there. And now we got plus 42. And now this becomes negative 40 plus 42, which gives us a value for y of 2. So let's understand our conclusion in here. So we are saying, if we take a look at this quadrilateral, and if we let x equals to 10, and we let y equals to 2, we are ensuring that opposite sides are going to be equal to each other. And if opposite sides are equal to each other, then we can label this quadrilateral as a parallelogram. Let's take a look at another example here. Now let's think about how we're going to approach this problem. If we take a look at the givens here, every single expression are in terms of angles. So now, in terms of strategy, let's think about the different properties that we have to show for angles. Well, we know that opposite angles are congruent. And in addition, we know that adjacent angles are supplementary. So let's use that. I mean, if angles, if opposite angles have to be congruent, then we know that this angle that we have here must be equivalent to this angle that we have here. So let's set, the, set them equal to each other. So now we have that 3y is equal to 42. And at this point, we can solve for y.
we can divide it by 3, we can divide it by 3, so now we can let that y have a value of 14. If adjacent angles need to be supplementary, then we can see that this angle that we have here has an expression of 8x minus 6. It's adjacent to the angle that we have here, which has an expression of 3y. If we add them, they need to be equivalent to 180 degrees. So let's write that down. That implies that 3y plus 8x minus 6, that's equivalent to 180 degrees. But don't forget that we already know what the value of y is. So we can just substitute that in here. So now we're going to get 3 times 14 plus 8x minus 6 is equivalent to 180 degrees. So now if we distribute, that is 42. So now we get 42 plus 8x minus 6 equals to 180 degrees. We can combine like terms. Now 42 minus 6, that is equivalent to 36. So now we got 8x plus 36 is equals to 180. And notice that that's a very simple equation. Let's take away 36 to both sides. So now we got that 8x is equivalent to 144. And at the end, if we divide it by 8, now we got a conclusion. And that conclusion is that x has a value, and that value is of 18. Now, let's make sense of what we have done here. We were given a quadrilateral. And now we found out that within this quadrilateral, if we let x have a value of 18, and we let y have a value of 14, opposite angles are going to be congruent, and adjacent angles are going to be supplementary, and that is enough conditions for us to conclude that this quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Hello, if you would like to continue to learn about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left.